Hi, this is Sahana. In this video, we are going to understand HTTP request and HTTP response. If you want to understand Web API, having good understanding of HTTP request and HTTP response is very much important. As you might already know, Web APIs use the HTTP as their primary means of communication over the internet. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is an application layer protocol designed to transfer information between client and server. HTTP protocol operates through a request response cycle. Client sends HTTP request to the server. Server responds with HTTP response. Let's start with HTTP request structure. HTTP request will have three main components. The first one is request line. Next, it will have request headers and other component is message body. If we talk about request line, request line will have three main components. One is HTTP method. It will specify the HTTP method and it will specify and it will have URL path for the request and the HTTP version. And request header provides additional information about the request. And message body contains additional data to be sent to the server. Not all the requests will have message body. Even HTTP response will have three main components. First component is status line. Other component is response header. And one more component is message body. That is response message body. Status line will have HTTP version and the status code which tells about the response success failure or any extra information and reason phrase reason phrase summarizes the meaning of a status code in a human readable text response header again this provides additional information about the response and message body contains actual data written by the server this is our web api let's understand http request and http response with the help of this web api here we have a swagger now, if you look at this swagger, this we have only one endpoint that is uh, that supports HTTP GET request. Now, let's understand HTTP request and HTTP response with the help of this API. Look at this web API. This web API has this GET ALL action method and this returns all the to do items. So, that means now our client is going to request to return all the to-do items if you want to see this is a swagger ui which is there to make our life a bit more easier if you want to inspect the actual request and actual response what happens behind the scene then just you can just inspect this will open this tab and click on this network tab and now you can see what uh, now you can see what happens behind the scene you can press f12 as well this will open developer tool now what i will do i will just execute this http get request see as in when i click on this execute here this has issued http request to our web api and our web api has returned http response if you look at this here we have header information and other information like response initiator timing and other information we are we are not concerned about other tabs let's understand this http request and http response in this context see here you can see, as we have discussed earlier, HTTP request will have a request line. Here in this case, you cannot see like a separate request line and a status line. This uh, general section will give information about request line and status line information. Here you can see that this is the request URL. We have requested this URL and request method is get. HTTP supports different methods like get, put, post, patch, delete. So in this case, we have issued HTTP GET request. In this case, you cannot see HTTP version. Only uh, there are certain cases where HTTP, uh, in some cases, browser will display HTTP version information. In some cases, it won't. Now, and one more thing that we have discussed is 
HTTP response will have a status line which will have again HTTP version let's not bother about HTTP version HTTP response status line will have status code and status text see this status code 200 is status code and this OK is the text that means 200 OK says that server has returned a positive response these two things we can inspect separately see here we have http request header as we have discussed earlier http request headers provide additional information to the server about the request here you can see that uh, there are different information um, like here you can see what are the different information provided in the header here we have method which is get method and this is the path and this is the scheme and accept encoding accept language so there are various information um, that are provided in the http headers and next response header will have content type response is like again response header will contain additional information about the response server has returned http response with this uh, header information like this is like content type is uh, application json that that means response is in json format and again date and server these are the extra information if you look at the http response see this is the http response you can check this http response in the swagger as well we developers use this swagger see this is the http response this is swagger ui even even with swagger you can see all this information see here you can see that this is http get request the request that we have sent to the server is http get request and we didn't send any parameter in this request this is cool and see this is the request yarn and server has returned 200 is the code and uh, see here you can see 200 is the code and here we have description 200 means success and this is our response body so this way client and server they communicate with http request and http response if in our example we have sent http get request to the server or web api but http supports different methods we call those methods as http verbs HTTP verbs or methods indicate desired action to be performed on a resource and they provide a standardized way for clients to interact with the server resources. Here are the commonly used HTTP verbs. They are get, post, put, patch and delete. Get method is used to retrieve information from a given URL and post is used to send data to the server Port is used to update the content and delete is used to delete the content. In our upcoming sessions, we are going to understand how to work with each of these methods in detail. That's it for today's session. There is a lot more to learn. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.